Okay, this is now the five minute tarot for the 24th of November 2017. And today, two more cards on our journey back through the major trumps. Um, and today, I think we're going to look at the Wheel of Fortune and the Hermit. And um, I'm not, I, I don't really know what to say. So I'm kind of good, not exactly make it up as I go along, but um, uh, I'll see how this goes. So the wheel, first thing is, the, we, we, we talk about the 10th major trump as being the wheel of fortune. So somehow, is, is there a difference between the wheel of fortune? Because that seems to emphasize the fact that it's a wheel you're dealing with. Right? And the wheel goes round and round and up and down. If you're at the bo if you're at the bottom, then as the wheel turns, you're going to be moved to the top, and that reminds me of um, a line in "Idiot Wind" by Bob Dylan when he sings, um, "You find when you reach the top, you're on the bottom." So we we can want fame and fortune, and that puts us in a position of being well known. But then it means that, okay, so apparently you're on the top, but let's say you've got an expensive car, but then you worry that it's going to get damaged or that people are going to destroy it. And it also means that you can't go to the store, you can't wander around because people will stop you. So being on the top might seem like a really good idea, and especially if you don't have it or if you're not there. But you can find that when you reach the top, you're actually on the bottom. You're not as as prominent or as well off as you could be. And this can be part of what's involved with the Wheel of Fortune card, that appearances can be deceiving, maybe. Or be careful what you wish for because it might happen, that kind of idea. Or maybe with the Wheel of Fortune, it's important to um, assess, maybe, um, or... Be, be wise when it comes to what it is that you want because you can find it when you reach the top, you're on the bottom. So this is, the, we call it the wheel of fortune, but what if we called it fortune's wheel? Then the emphasis would be on the word fortune instead of being on the word wheel. And how does that change the interpretation we, we would give of the card? So two things. One is the wheel. If you think of a wheel, wheel can represent change because you're at a certain point in the wheel. Maybe you're here and you go down or you go up or you go back, you know, clockwise, anti-clockwise. And that can be something that, that's to be considered with the wheel of fortune. Are you going clockwise or counterclockwise? So are you going up, like one, two, three, four, five, or are you going backwards, five, four, three, two, one? And that, that can, the, depending on the question, it can be that um, with the Wheel of Fortune, and maybe this is a Wheel of Fortune upright and reverse, with the Wheel of Fortune, go through logically and according to the time. But with the Wheel of Fortune reverse, maybe what's important is to go backwards or to go, to take steps back to see how you got to the present position. So thinking backwards may be more important with the Wheel of Fortune reversed, whereas thinking forward into the future that you're looking for, perhaps, um, that, that can be what's emphasised by the Wheel of Fortune upright. Because there's change and it's also revolving. And so with the Wheel of Fortune, you've got the idea of up and down. But at the same time, we're, we're on a fixed wheel on the outs, let's say on the, the circumference of the wheel. So... If you go from here to there or from here down at the bottom up to the top, it's a different position that you're going to find yourself in. So with the Wheel of Fortune, you're dealing with different positions rather than random change, right? Because if you're at the bottom and the wheel moves, you're going to end up at the top. It's not like if you're at the bottom and there's a change, suddenly you're going to be over here and completely off the wheel. So there's something maybe predictable about the Wheel of Fortune and what's involved with it because it's a wheel and if you're at this point, you, you, you're either going to be up here or you're going to be back this way. You're not going to be over there. So it's not random, the Wheel of Fortune. It's kind of predictable. 
The other thing, so that's from starting with the idea of the wheel of fortune, but the fortune itself, um, I came across a quote recently from some Latin, maybe it was Cicero or I don't know who it was, but he talked about how fortune plays a major role in success and failure. And that can be something for you to consider. Maybe go on Wikipedia or onto Google and look up Fortuna, who was a goddess of the Roman goddess of luck, and find out something about her. Because it's fortune's wheel in some way. It can be useful for us to know, or maybe when the wheel of fortune comes up, how much of a role does luck, good luck and bad luck, have in um in the outcome to the question or in the, the, the basis, let's say, if it's referring to the past, um, how much does f fortune, good fortune or bad fortune play in um, what actually happened? Because it's easy to think, especially nowadays, that and with various websites and, and books and so on, that we, we can choose what it is that we want and we can disregard fortune, but maybe when the wheel of fortune comes up in a spread, it's going to be important for the questioner to recognize that fortune is going to have a say as well. And if, if fortune has it in for you, then it's not going to work. Whereas if fortune is smiling on you, then you can do nothing, you can do stupid things, and it's still going to work. So fortune's wheel or the wheel of fortune. Um, so how do, let, let's say the wheel of fortune represents change. How do we handle it? And in order to understand how we handle it, we go back one number and we go to number, the wheel of fortune's 10, we go back to nine, which is the hermit. So maybe we can consider a couple of things about the hermit and what he, he or she represents in order to understand the best way to handle change or the best way to deal with the activities or the actions in connected with the Wheel of Fortune. Um, so the hermit shows this old fellow with a lamp held up. <laughs> so either, maybe it's he's lighting his own way or maybe he's showing the way to other people. Some people look on the, the, the hermit as a teacher or as a, somebody who's showing other people the way to go, right? He's at the front and he's got the light. Um, so it can be with the hermit that you find somebody to follow. Um, I've got kind of an independent streak and I don't like following people. Um, but anyway, that's my personal opinion. Okay, so we've got this old man with a lamp. So it, somehow because he's old, we can think he represents experience. So how do you handle change with the Wheel of Fortune? You base your actions and your thinking on experience. So you need to think things through. And you assess what has happened, or how you got to the current position whatever the question happens to be, and you think about it, and you analyze it, and you assess, and then you make adjustments in your behavior. So if you know that doing this is always going to give you a bad result, stop doing that. Whereas if, if maybe maybe you, you do things a certain way, and it almost works, but not quite. So the hermit, because of his experience, is going to say, Okay, don't do it exactly the same way. Make this slight change and you're going to get the result that you want or there's going to be success. Or we're going to set things up so that fortune will smile on us. Because maybe going back to fortune, maybe you can um, uh, talk fortune into doing what it is that you want. Maybe you can't. Maybe fortune has already decided what's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it but and that's something for you personally to think about and consider but maybe you can sweet talk fortune um 
Um, but so if if we're thinking about um, how does the 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 hermit make decisions, or how does he choose, or how does he analyze? And I think I want to say that he's going to make use of philosophy and not psychology. And um, this I'm going to mention again, or mention um, when it comes to Shakespeare's sonnets. Because this is, was one of the reasons for wanting to do Shakespeare's sonnets is because I was wondering about psychology and philosophy. Because psychology, the ology bit in psychology means the study of, and the psycho, psyche, bit at the beginning of psychology is psyche, a Greek word that means the mind or spirit. And spirit's really hard to understand. So with psychology, you're trying to study things that are hard to understand, and maybe you can't really understand them. The mind as well is complicated. But somehow, um, you, you, you've also got different psychologists and different schools of thought and different ideas about how people are built and what we're capable of. So if you're going to follow psychology, I, I, I don't think it works as well as going with philosophy. So the Phil part of philosophy means love of, and the Sophie part of philosophy is Sophia, the goddess of wisdom. So you can go with psychology and study the mind, or you can go with philosophy and love wisdom. And I think the main, well, don't know about the main difference, but one of the important differences between psychology and philosophy is you probably need a degree in or a PhD to understand psychology, even though people read Jungian and Freudian and Adlerian and all the Gestalt and all the rest of it, and they get something out of it. But somehow a child can understand wisdom. And I think the fact that children recognize, and all of us, no matter what our background, we recognize when something is wise, when it's the wise thing to do. We may not be able to explain it to other people, but we, I think we recognize it. It's easier to recognize wisdom than it is to recognize the truth about the human mind. Because what's true for me, the way I'm built, is not going to, is not going to be automatically true for you because you're built a different way. And this can be astrological because you, you're a Turian and I'm not. And Turians have their own basic nature and their own way of behaving. And I've got the moon in Cancer and you've got the moon in Virgo. So we think differently. So what's true for me, what's real for me, what's right for me is is right for me, but it's not automatically going to be right for you. And this is the problem, I think, with psychology, is we're all different, but we all, we all can recognize wisdom. So I'm thinking, how does the, we've got the Wheel of Fortune that represents change and variation, and how do we deal with it we go back to the hermit and we use philosophy and we use wisdom to deal with the ups and downs of life. Okay, that was it. i probably be back. To, I hope I'm back tomorrow. If not, it'll be two days from now. But I'll try and get something up tomorrow. Um, so thanks for watching. And if you have comments or questions, let me know. Okay, bye-bye.